last presentation, as I said, of the day. I would request all of you to stay back for a while, as we have a very important, very informative presentation on its way, which is going to be by Sri S.K. Suri, sir. He is former general manager at Rail Coach Factory, Kapoor Thala. Can we have you here on this stage, sir, please? So we have with us Mr. Suri, he is a senior officer at Indian Railway Services, uh, Services of Mechanical Engineers and formal general manager of the Railway Coach Factory, RCF Kapurthala. During his tenure, Mr. Suri held uh, various key posts, including chief mechanical engineer, additional general manager, NF Railway, and advisor to the Zambian Railway of Zambia. His designation has to be former general manager of the railway coach factory, RCF Kapurthala. Please put your hands together for Mr. S.K. Suri, sir. Mr. Narendra Shah, managing editor, Metro Rail News, Mrs. Priyanka Sahu, Director of Business Development, all the distinguished guests. Indian Railways is having a phenomenal growth. All of you who are associated with the railways stand to benefit a lot. I will try to give you a bird's eye view within the next 10 to 15 minutes. The railways comprises of track, traction, signaling, rolling stock, etc. I will be mainly focusing on rolling stock. We just had a presentation on the uh, dedicated freight corridors. So as it was mentioned, we have a golden quadrilateral connecting Delhi, Calcutta, Mumbai, and Chennai, and the two diagonals. It is only 16% of the network but carries about 58% of the traffic. So far, Indian Railways has been moving both passenger and goods trains on the same tracks. And now we have decided to have dedicated freight corridors. The reason being that the two types of trains have different requirements. Passenger trains have very light axle loads, should have high speeds. Goods trains have heavy axle loads and have relatively low speeds. When you use the same system for moving both, you get sub-optimal performance of both types of trains. So dedicated freight corridors are coming up. I'll talk in a greater detail later. And there's a going to be a substantial enhancement in the production of rolling stock, that is locomotives, coaches, and wagons, where you all come in. The two dedicated freight corridors being built currently, New Delhi to Mumbai, Dudhyana to Calcutta. The length is slightly more than 3,000 kilometers. The outlay is 1 lakh crores. And the project is going on in full swing. And most of it is likely to be completed within the current financial year. You will have trains running at 100 kmph, loads 13,000 tons. At present, we, have, we carry loads of 5,000 tons and the headway will be 10 minutes. Headway is the interval between two successive trains. During the COVID period, you might have watched on TV movement of oxygen expresses, which were running at a breakneck speed. As soon as the dedicated freight corridors get completed, you will have good trains running in a similar fashion at 100 kilometers, following one another after 10 minutes, and traveling nonstop because there will be no need to give precedence to any mail ex express trains on the dedicated freight corridor. At the same time, we have a Delhi-Mumbai industrial corridor coming up from Delhi to Mumbai. And you'll have uh, industrial townships at every about 150 kilometers, which will be, again, state-of-the-art townships. And the outlay on this Delhi-Mumbai industrial corridor is also rupees 100,000 crores. And this should also be coming up as soon as the freight corridor is ready. So as I said, railways is having a phenomenal growth. It is because of three factors. One is modernization, second is expansion, and third is outsourcing. 
uh, one or two examples of modernization. You have heard of the Vande Bhavit trains, okay? Then we have we will start building 12,000 horsepower locomotives in the country, and India will be amongst five or six countries in the world which will be building 12,000 horsepower locomotives. We are as soon as the dedicated freight corridors are completed, we will have a lot of spare capacity available on Delhi, Mumbai, and Delhi, Howrah, which are the busiest routes. So we will be able to introduce many more passenger trains. In fact, today, we have about seven crore wait-listed passengers whom railways is unable to provide accommodation. And railways' ultimate aim is that each one of them should be given accommodation because they're all serious travelers. They, are, they have paid full amount to get themselves waitlisted. Outsourcing, so far railways like defense had been doing everything in-house. Now we have decided we should be bas focusing on areas of core competence and outsource everything else. Railways has a turnover of rupees 2.4 lakh crores per year. So any such decision to outsource activities would generate business worth thousands of crores. So coming to the rolling stock, which means locomotives, coaches, coaches, you have mainline coaches, you have metro coaches, and you have high-speed coaches, which will be, again, absolutely state-of-the-art coaches, which eventually will start getting manufactured in India. As you are aware, we are having a high-speed corridor from Mumbai to Ahmedabad, which is 500 kilometers long, and trains will be running at 320 kilometers per hour. Today, the fastest train we are running is 160 kilometers per hour. And for the non-stop train, the time between Mumbai to Ahmedabad will be only two hours. And then you have wagons. So in the rolling stock area, the business potential is unbelievable. Worldwide, the rolling stock production is growing 5 to 6% per year. In India, it is growing at 20 to 25% per year. So each one of you who is associated with uh, supply of sub-assemblies or components of rolling stock should also aim for a yearly growth of 20 to 25%. Railways were earlier making locomotives and coaches in-house and wagons had been outsourced. Now we have decided to outsource even manufacture of locomotives and coaches. We have recently awarded a contract worth 26,000 crores to Siemens for production of electric locomotives in the railway workshop at Dahod. It is the biggest contract which Siemens has ever managed to secure. Within the railway production units, we are currently having a production of 1,200 locomotives per year. The electrical equipment is almost 100% outsourced. So the traction motors, transformers, control equipment, everything is being uh, procured from outside. Then on the mechanical side, we have something called electric locomotive shell. It is the underframe and the superstructure. This also is outsourced to the extent of 90%. And each electric locomotive shell, which is basically a Heavy fabrication costs one crore. So you can imagine the business potential for this single item for people in the private sector. As I mentioned, the wagon manufacturer has already been outsourced to private sector, uh, maybe 20, 30 years back. And, but the quantity of ordering is increasing rapidly. So last year, the railways have released orders for 75,000 wagons, which was totally unprecedented. Never before in the history of Indian railways had we released such huge orders. We are also going in for stainless steel wagons. So in the coaches, we are going in for more and more modern coaches so that the, the 
speeds are higher, the acceleration is faster, acceleration and deceleration, which greatly reduces the transit time, and the passenger comfort is higher. The Vande Bharat coaches, some of you must have traveled with them, they have automatic doors, the footstep is retractable, we have continuous windows, we have fully sealed gangways. In the conventional uh, uh, trains, moving from one coach to another coach is slightly difficult. Here it is so good that you can travel from one end of the train to another end with, with no difficulty at all. Some of the passengers traveling by Vande Bharat, they have such a great sense of pride that they all end up taking selfies with the Vande Bharat rake in the background. And what are the plans ahead? Maybe in 10 years from now, all the important trains running in India will be like Vande Bharat trains. So Indian Railways is going for a phenomenal increase in production of Vande Bharat coaches. We would be awarding contracts to the private sector for manufacture of 400 rakes at a cost of rupees 50,000 crores. Within the next few days, the railways will be placing the contracts for 200 rakes at the rate of rupees 120 crores per rake. In fact, the order for 120 rakes is being awarded to RVNL, Rail Vikas Nigam Limited plus TMH, which is a Russian organization, and order for 80 rakes to Titagard Wagons plus their uh, partner, and they will be making them in ICF. We will also be making 100 rakes with aluminum body coaches. So Matrix Aluminum, some of the companies there, they were keen to know if they can uh, make an entry into the railway, so this is good news for them. So in the aluminum body coaches, there will be a lot of components of aluminum, and that will be a good potential for them. Gives the current level of production of coaches, 6,550 coaches per year. ICF will make 2,900, RCF 1,850, and MCF 1,800 coaches. The procurement system in Indian Railways is totally transparent. Most of you must be familiar with it. Some who are not, I'll just rush through. The system is entirely online. All railways and DM, DMRC tenders are on this side. System of procurement is through advertised tenders. It is online tendering, and it is online uploading of offers. So all you need is a laptop. Any time of the day or night, you can download the tenders, and you can upload your offers. Eighty percent quantity is normally ordered on approved suppliers, but we also encourage newcomers. So twenty percent quantity can be given for developmental orders. Any bidder can download any number of tenders. There's no uh, cost. Tender cost is not there. Offers are to be submitted online. A bidder can upload any number of documents to prove its credential. If somebody is a new bidder, so whatever you have done in the past, you can. You can approve your credentials by uh, uh, uploading any number of documents. Tenders having a value above rupees five crores, they are to be decided through the system of reverse auction. Just to mention uh, the opportunities in stainless steel coaches. So the stainless steel fabrication. Okay. 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 So just to give you an idea of what all uh, you can do, so you have stainless steel fabrication. There are about twenty items. In fact, a a coach shell, a coach body, consists of two end walls, two side walls, a roof and an underframe. The underframe is predominantly mild steel. The end wall, side walls, and roof, they are in stainless steel. So um, uh, then you have the bogey frame, and then you have other stainless steel items like biodegradable tanks, water tanks, etc. 
the end wall cost is rupees 1 lakh each there are two end walls per coach 100% outsourced side walls and roof they are ordered usually as a unit cost is rupees 17 lakhs per unit 60% outsourced front part which is a part of the under frame cost rupees 2 lakhs each there are two front parts per coach 100% outsourced under frame costs rupees 10 lakh each one per coach 50% outsourced so overall business potential for these items just in coaches is rupees 2000 crores per annum then you have the coach bogies so to manufacture coach bogies you have to invest in a robotic welding machine which doesn't cost much it's only about one crore and you have to have a five axis machining center which is costlier maybe 8 10 crores and railways are outsourcing fully assembled bogies earlier they were making all in house now they are outsourcing business potential is 1000 crores per annum similarly furnishing of coaches seats and berths have to be made to in specifications so that they are fire resistant you have modular toilets in frp side wall panels and ceiling panels in frp and just for the furnishing part of it the overall business potential is rupees 2500 crores per annum railways have started fitting air springs in their coaches on 100 percent basis so these are to be provided in the secondary suspension of all new coaches in a bogey you have primary suspension and secondary suspension secondary suspension will have air springs there are four springs air springs per coach and the overall business potential is rupees 400 crores per annum volvo buses have also started going in for air springs and tomorrow in case the truck manufacturers also go in for air springs then this potential will increase many fold right now it is 400 crores per annum it may become 4000 crores per annum if everybody goes in for them railways are building new workshops they have built a coach factory at latour they have put built a wagon repair workshop at a place called Vadala Pudi, which is near Vishakhapatnam. There is a midlife rehabilitation workshop in Sonipat. A new wagon repair workshop is coming up in Badnera. All these workshops will outsource a lot of activities with a huge business potential. Some of the other areas, one is solar power generation. Indian railways have decided to become carbon neutral by the year 2030. No other railway system in the world has set such a target for itself. So we are going in for 100% electrification, which is likely to be completed within a year. We have started providing uh, uh, solar cells, uh, photovoltaic cells on station platforms, station buildings, Station buildings normally have up to 500 kilowatts. Katra station, which is near Jammu, has one megawatt. And then all the parking areas, two wheelers, four wheelers, in the workshops we have. And ultimately, we have track from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, 70,000 kilometers of track. By the side of the track, we have some land. So ultimately, we may start having solar power generation all along the railway track. redevelopment of railway stations is another big project 1275 railway stations are to be redeveloped the outlays may vary from rupees 100 crores to 7000 crores each so you can imagine the business potential of all these habib ganj gandhi nagar and bangalore vishweshwara terminal these have already been completed and they have come up very well at around 100 stations the work is in progress for New Delhi station, we had floated a tender worth rupees 7,500 crores. Probably it has been discharged, and we will be uh, re-inviting the tender maybe within a month or so. Okay, then there are business opportunities in other areas. So as I mentioned, dedicated freight corridors are coming up this year. New Delhi Mumbai corridor will handle predominantly container traffic. So a phenomenal growth in traffic is expected. Earlier, 
there were no containers being manufactured in India. They were all coming from China because the Chinese government was giving a huge subsidy and the cost of an imported Chinese container was cheaper than the cost of raw material. But now government of India stopped uh, Chinese containers to come here. So it is a greenfield area. The requirement will be 50,000 containers in the next five years and business potential is about 2,000 crores. Now we come to something which is highly technical. It is called online monitoring of rolling stock and MVIS machine vision inspection system. So far, railways are doing, going in for preventive maintenance of rolling stock. Locos coaches and wagons, they were removed from service after certain kilometrage, sometimes one lakh kilometers, some areas two lakh kilometers, taken to a workshop or depot, disassembled, the critical assemblies were examined, their uh, uh, clearances were checked, if they are within acceptable limits, reassembled, otherwise either replaced or repaired. That was the system being followed. Now we are going in for predictive maintenance. You might have heard that some people wear watches which monitor your parameters continuously and keep relaying to your doctor also. So sometime you may get a call from your doctor, please come over. And you say, why? He says your blood pressure is fluctuating. I have to change your medicine. Okay, right. So these systems, 25 such systems have been installed in India, they are working well. 95 systems have been on order. There's a mission Raftar where we'll run all the trains at 160 kilometers on Delhi, Mumbai, Delhi, Calcutta route, under which tenders worth 400 crores for this equipment will be floated shortly. There's a smart yard project under which tenders worth 1,200 crores will be floated within a few months. So we also have turnkey project services sector. Anyway, I'll. I will conclude here. And if you're already working for the railways, you may consider enlarging your footprints. If not, you should certainly consider diversifying into the railway sector. Thank you very much. In case anybody has any questions, I'll be pleased to answer them. Yeah, please. Inko mic de diye, please. Either. Oh. Uh, like bullet train in India, yes. the capital cost is so much high. Yes. So as compared to the financial terms of ROI, Yes. Uh, how it is beneficial to a country like us, yes. that bullet train and uh, normal trains, so such a huge amount is expended on a particular line right. in place of we can do 100 other trains. Right. Yeah. We, or we it is a feather in no a no gap. You are, you are absolutely right. We had the same situation for metros. Hanji, we had the same situation for metros. Each phase of metro cost you a huge amount. It can vary from 10,000 crores to 40,000 crores. And thinking that we could never afford it, we delayed going in for metro by maybe 10, 20 years. And once we have gone in for metro, DMRC has been such a grand success. It is moving about 40 lakh passengers every day. Every state, every city wants a metro, whatever be the cost. They'll do it. Similarly, this right now we are running maximum at 160 kmph. We run these at 320 kmph. The uh, Mumbai uh, Ahmedabad is, is coming up. We also have many other such sections on the drawing board. It would make it easier for you to shift from air travel to train travel. If from Mumbai to Ahmedabad, you can do it in two hours and you have to board the train only five minutes earlier, it is faster than going to the airport two hours in advance and then taking one hour for that, okay? So it will be a complete transformation. Initially, the government has to bear the cost. It is funded by Japanese who have given a loan which we have to repay in 30, 40 years and we are, I think, paying an interest of half a percent or one percent. So somebody has given a soft loan. We are investing the money. 
but it may transform the economy of the country. So the spin of benefits may be huge. In fact, sir, that's what the point is. A lot of people ask this question that what is, how do we actually evaluate the ROI of any metro or high speed rail corridor? Right, right. I am coming from a startup background, so how right. do I generally answer a question like this is, right. how do you evaluate the success of a Flipkart or a Zomato in the country? Right. right. You don't uh, you know, evaluate the success by profitability, ROI or listing on the stock exchange. Right, right. How you actually evaluate it is the kind of impact and the transformation it is creating across, creating a whole lot of ecosystem in a, in a city or an, in a country right. which never existed. And the cost of doing that is is like kind of, you know, a particular flip card or a Zomato has done at one tenth or one hundredth of that particular cost. So think of it as India in in, pro, in work in progress, whatever the cost that goes in work work in progress is really worth it because on that side of the uh, of the tunnel, light is already there. I think you have put it very well. If you look at only the expenditure and the income from that project, then it will never be workable. But the spin off benefits are so huge. Maybe 100 times, maybe 1,000 times. So that is there. Anybody else? Sanjay. Sir, it was one of the excellent presentation. Thank you. <laughs> My only one question. Sanjay. In one of the slides, you have told you are uh, doing redevelopment of 1,275 right. railway stations. Right. And you have also told that you are uh, probably discharging the New Delhi Railway Station. Pardon? Yeah. New Delhi Railway Station. Yeah. My question is, I think in New Delhi Railway Station, near about seven to eight bidders, they have come for pre-bid meeting, but only hardly two have bid for this project. How will you complete 1,275 stations? when bidders aren't not bidding even for New Delhi Railway Station, which is cost is more, uh, cost is nearly 7,500 crores. So I think uh, 1,275 station may take 50 years for redevelopment of this station. Hmm. Okay. Should what I are I your views? Uh, should I respond? Yeah. Out of the three stations which have been developed, uh, Habib Ganj in Bhopal and Gandhi Nagar in uh, Ahmedabad, they have been developed on PPP basis. Railways ke stations are in the heart of the city. The station was set up maybe 50 years ago and the city has developed. So PPP is that if you have 10 lakh square feet developed, then you give a five lakh square feet to the builder ko on 99 years lease. So if you are a builder and you have invested 300 crores or 400 crores, you have made it in three और आपको वो 5 लाख स्क्वायर फीट मिल गया तो उसी दिन आपके तो 300 करोड़ वापस आ गए ठीक है एंड फर्दर जो प्रॉफिट शेयरिंग होता है सो इट इज स्टिल वर्क इन प्रोग्रेस अभी ये जो न्यू दिल्ली स्टेशन में टेंडर इसलिए डिस्चार्ज किए गए कि जो मिनिमम कॉस्ट आई थी इट वाज अबाउट 2000 करोड़ मोर देन व्हाट वी हैड एस्टीमेटेड तो आपने जो एस्टीमेट किया है उससे अगर बहुत ज्यादा आती है देन यू देन यू हैव अ रीलुक ठीक है कि कोई स्पेसिफिकेशन में कुछ चेंज करना है ऑल्टर करना है जो भी है बट एज ए सेड इट हैज बीन डिस्चार्ज एंड इट इज गोइंग टू बी फ्लोटेड अगेन मे बी विद इन फिफ्टीन डेज और ट्वेंटी डेज इट इज नॉट कि इट हैज बीन पुट इन कोल्ड स्टोरेज सो एज वी गो अलॉन्ग वी आर ट्राइंग ऑल मॉडल्स ठीक है तो अगर जहाँ पी 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 मॉडल चल जाएगा देन दी कॉस्ट इनकर्ड बाई दी रेलवेज इज जीरो ठीक है रेलवेज की कॉस्ट जीरो है और अदरवाइज किसी में रेलवेज ने फोर्टी परसेंट फिफ्टी परसेंट डाल दिया so of course railways will also uh, get the rental from that property Achha, just just for general information let me tell you most of you must have gone to cannot place to new delhi station jo banega theek hai station to station hai iske iski jo property development hai it is planned to be better than cannot place so it will take 3 years to build after 3 years you may prefer to go to this uh, railway station ki cannot place than the original cannot place then there's a street called uh, Straight Entry Road. Aap logo ne shayad dekha nahi hoga. There's one Chemsford Road which goes to Pahadgan side of New Delhi Station. There's a Minto Road which goes to Ajmeri Gate side. On dono ke beech mein ek patli si sadak hai, jo railways ki private road hai. And on either side we have either railway bungalows or railway offices which can be relocated. So under this project, the Straight Entry Road will be developed as one of the most
fashionable streets in the world. It will be better than Bond Street of London. It will be better than Regent Street of London. Okay? And it is, it is going to happen in the next three years. So all these possibilities are there. Okay? Sir, part of my question has a reply. My okay. another question was, yeah. for execution of 1,275 stations, how many years it will take? The plan is to do it in five years. Okay? So it will not be five years, six years, seven years. plan is to do it in five years. But in case the work is not awarded then? No. As I said, if you have three stations completed, there are 100 stations in progress. 100 is not enough. 100 stations are in progress. Sir, listen, my question is straightforward. You are saying when the work has been awarded to XYZ. My question is, is when a nine has bidders had participated, only two ultimately has participated. A nine has uh, attended the pre-bid meeting, only two had attended. Koi bhi aap naya kaam start karte hai, they are pitfalls. Hai? Chalo, I, I think Mr. Shah is asking me. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. In case any any one of you wants to interact with me, you can note down. You you have my you can speak to me. Hai? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Shri S.K. Suri, for enlightening the event with your excellent experience and knowledge. Now I would like to request Mr. Jugal Kishore Bhatti for presenting Momento to Shri S.K. Suri. Can we please have a round of applause? 